Hey guys, Technical Evangelist Kurt Chan here, and today I want to talk to you about the fundamentals of working with joints. Now what we have is a fifth axis deuce vice, and I'm going to actually set it up symmetrically so both jaws move together, as well as we're actually going to create a piece of stock in the middle and actually set up parameters for the stock. So as we change the size of the stock, the actually the jaws will move with the stock. So let's go ahead and dive right in. When you work with imported geometry, one thing you'll notice is that all the components are actually free to move around. So the key is starting off with one component that is grounded. So if you actually double click on the base, right click, you can actually say find in browser, which will allow you to give you a squiggly line underneath the name and you could just right click and say ground. So now that component won't move around. Now the next step, what you'll see too is I can actually grab any one of these parts and they will all move individually. I physically want this cluster to move all together because that's what's going to move along the, the base of the vise. So a quick thing is I want to introduce rigid groups. Now rigid groups actually allows you to take a group of components and under select, we'll do a quick window select, create a group of components and now actually allow you to move all of them as one group. So once the rigid group is set up, the next step we want to do is start applying joints to showcase the jaws assembled to the base. So under joints, I can either use the S key, type in joints, capture the position, and the component is this piece right here. So I'm going to pick the bottom of that jaws, and I want it to be assembled now to this face. Now, I don't want it to be rigid because it needs to move. So under type, drop down and go to slider. And see it slide in the wrong direction. So I can actually change the normal and say go down the x-axis. And that's the direction I want it to move along. So we go ahead and grab this. And now showing that movement between that. And we'll take the same approach for the other side of the vise. So as you can see, both of these will now move individual of each other. Now, what we want to do is actually create something called a motion link. And what this does is that it allows me to take two joints and show a relationship between them. So if I go under my joints under the browser and pick both sliders, see how both of them are moving together. But if I say reverse, now they'll move separate of each other or opposite of each other. So now you see how this is, but see how it's just not centered up correctly? So the trick to have it centered up correctly is I'm gonna go ahead and just delete. And the first thing is, is I know that the vise or the, the, the jaws are probably gonna come up to just that point here and this point here. Now that's kind of an estimate, right? I can eyeball it, but to be sure, what I can do is actually, if I use the S key, type in align, I'm gonna actually align this face to that face right there. And then now repeat the alignment, do the same thing for that face that will go up to that face. So that's how far the, the jaws can go up to each other. And now I have it pretty much symmetrical as how it's lined up. And then from here now, this is where we would apply a motion link. So we'll capture the position. I'll grab the two joints I wanna show a relationship between, turn it on to reverse. And now as I grab this one, this will all move now symmetrical of each other, just like that. Before creating a new component for the stock, one thing I want to show you is an option within the preferences to where I like to turn it off when I'm working in context of an assembly or creating a new component within an assembly. So for example, under if you drop down underneath your name, come down here to preferences. What you see under design is something called auto project geometry and active sketch plane. So if you actually selected another component, what this does, it actually will project that face into your new sketch, which is one thing I don't like. So what this means is that if I keep that on and I say create a new sketch on this component, see how it automatically, if I turn off the components, it actually projected that face into my now my my new sketch down here, which is something I, I don't like. So what I like to do is actually turn, we'll just undo, is turn that off under preferences once again, design, auto project geometry on active sketch plane, 
So now if I create a new sketch on this face, it doesn't project that existing face at all. So the first thing we want to do is actually create a new component to represent the stock. Now under the assembly tab, you can grab new component. Now the key part here is that sometimes if you actually have something else selected within your tree, it would actually create the new component underneath that part. So always make sure you clear out the parent. And in this case, I always want it to be a, a new component from the top level assembly rather than an existing part, which would then make that existing part now a sub-assembly. So from here, go ahead and create a new component. I can now name this stock. Go and say OK. Now it created a new component within this top level assembly. And now it's really beginning with creating now a new sketch. So under sketch, create sketch. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom on in and I want it to be basically like referenced off of this face here. Capture the position. And we'll just zoom on out. And I'm just going to create a rectangle just to start to represent the stock. And one other piece I like is now I like to hide everything else. So stop the sketch, right click on stock, and I'll just isolate it. So now I'm only concentrating just on that on that component that I want to work in because I'm that's the only one that's activated. You can see here in the tree, it's only one sketch. I'm going to re-edit the sketch. Now I want to add some symmetry to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a couple lines here to go right down the middle. And of course, I could have just done a center point rectangle, but this is just another way. If I hit X, if I select the line and hit X on my key, that makes these construction lines now. I'm going to even need to add a point. So under sketch, point drop a point right here, and then now let's add some symmetry. So under symmetry for the sketch palette, you're gonna pick the lines you wanna be symmetrical along what? So that center line here, add another symmetrical relationship here. And then now what you'll see is as I grab the center of this, I'm zoom on in, grab the center of that, click the, the origin, I'm going to make it coincident. So now it's referenced right off the center. We'll add a couple dimensions here. So we'll go with four inches. And then we'll now make this one three inches. You'll see that update symmetrically along the center. And then lastly, what we'll do is add an extrude. Just make this two inches thick for our stock. From here now, we can just come back to the initial stock, right click and say unisolate. And now we have the stock represented within the vise, you know, to give you an idea of where it would be. But now we have to apply some joints to show all the movement happen. So we're gonna come back at the very top, activate the top level assembly, and then now let's apply some more joints. So we want this guy to be at the center of the vise in all relations. So when we update, it's always gonna be centered. Now, something easy here and something to do so under assemble, come down to joint origin. Don't forget, you could always add these to your shortcuts. So I could just add drive joints up here or exit out. Nice, nice way. I'm going to capture the position. Under type, I'm going to do between two faces. I want it to be between here and here. And then we want it to be right here. And then we're going to do another joint origin between here. Make it between two faces here and here, and put it right here. And then we'll do now it on the jaws. So we'll go this face. There we go. So now we're gonna go ahead and apply some other joints. So joint, and what we can do is the component from here to there. And I'm actually gonna make it rigid. distance between this face and one of the teeth here. And we'll add another joint here, a repeat joint from here to this point. Make it rigid as well. So you can see now this guy cannot move because these both are rigid to each other. And just to do a quick test, what we can do is come on down back to the stock, go to the sketch that we have, activate it, right click, say show dimensions. And if I double click on one of these dimensions and say make it four inches, that will move in size symmetrically down the middle. And this, let's see if I made it two inches or 2.5 inches. 
that will now move perfectly just like that. So it works great, but I would hate to always come down here, turn on the sketch, change the dimension, as well as if I want to change the height of my stock, I have to go back and in the tree, edit that, that extrusion. So this is where we're now we're going to introduce working with parameters. I'm going to hide the sketches that I have here. And now under parameters, what we'll do is start setting up some references. So under the model parameters, you see it could have, I have the vices, I have the jaws, and then I have my stock. If I open up my stock under sketch, you can see I have the 2.5, the actual width, and then I have the length, the four inches, and then I even have the extrude, so a two inch of height. So what I'm gonna do is under user parameter, I'm gonna say, let me call this height. I'm gonna say that is two inches. I'm gonna add another user parameter, call this width, and that is now 2.5 inches wide. And lastly, length, and this is four inches. So now back under the expressions for my dimensions that are captured here and the heights, what we can do now is actually change these to match with this. So for the 2.5, we call that width. So I'll type in width. For four inches, we call that length. And for the height, we call that height. So now if I actually change these expressions, let's call this for the height, three inches, that will change. Make this three inches and this two inches or three inches, sorry, two. And now that will change altogether. So anytime I wanna make a change to the stock, I can always come back up to change parameters, just come straight to these. Let's make this height five, we'll make this four and four. So with that said, Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about how to work with joints. Hopefully it was a refresher for a lot of you guys on joint origins, motion links, working with in between two faces of joint origins. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up. And thanks again for watching guys.